Good morning, everyone. I'm Olivia Holas for Boca Magazine, and it's time for a coffee break with Marius Jed, managing partner of Jed Lawyers. So nice to see you, Marty. Good morning, Olivia. Nice to see you as well. And I see you also have your cup of coffee today, so. I had it. I've been falling off the wagon a little bit, but I needed to come back on, so to speak. <laughs> That's awesome. That's great. Well, um, you know, how are you and your family doing during this time? I, you know, we haven't really had a chance to talk on a personal level, but how's your family doing during, you know, this pandemic? Thank you for asking. Kind question. Everyone's doing well. Um, I have three children and a wife, and we've been back and forth to New Jersey. I have a place at the Jersey Shore, and when the COVID hit, we obviously, the whole company went remote. We're about 100 people in the company, and we still are remote. We are really taking this extremely seriously. Um, we have not even thought about reopening until the numbers get even a little lower. And I've had actually some friends in West Palm Beach and in Tampa who have firms that opened up in either mid-July or August, and unfortunately had a uh, shutdown pretty quickly because the COVID ran right through them through the offices. So I've been remote, we're remote, my kids are remote from school. We're really happy. Um, Monday's the Jewish holiday, Tuesday we're back in school physically, I'm premise and we're excited for that. I think more my wife than me, but uh, it's time. Everyone needs to get back to some sort of normalcy with an understanding that this is a pandemic, but uh, we can't just keep living in our houses. Absolutely. Well, I'm glad to hear that you're doing well and also the entire team at Jet Lawyers. But, you know, speaking of COVID, you have had COVID-related cases. Um, tell us about one in particular. Sure. So the firm, obviously, before March 13th, no one heard of a COVID case. But we've had cases and many inquiries. And the case I'm, we just unfortunately signed up last week is so relevant and just brings this whole thing into perspective and how serious this is. Um, the case is a, um, an airline. I'm not going to mention the name of the airline. He was an airline pilot, actually, who aged out because airline pilots have to retire at 70, and he still wanted to fly, and he became a stewardess. So he was a cabin attendant in the airline, and this gentleman was meticulous with his life, the way he um, just journaled and logged everything down where he was, when he went on the plane, where he stayed, when he was staying overnight. Unfortunately, this gentleman caught COVID, and he was in the, month, it was in the hospital for a month, and he passed. Um, leaving a wife and a severely disabled daughter who that's why he went back to work was to help support his daughter who was a special needs child um, and it's a horrible situation it would be horrible horrible right so I guess you're currently working on this case but you know how does that tie in with um, you know the workplace and people going back to to work and and also still dealing with you know what we have as a pandemic Absolutely. So the CDC and OSHA have given out guidelines for employers like Jed Lawyers, like every airline, like your Boca Mag, that we have to follow and comply. Obviously, a lot of it has to do with the PP, um, PPE and giving or providing a safe workplace. Now, what's interesting about these different COVID cases, and there's thousands of them, obviously, unfortunately, in America, we lost about 200,000 lives. The issue becomes is this a work comp issue? So let's just say, for example, Olivia, you're picking up a box in your office there and you hurt your shoulder. That would be covered under work comp. And it makes sense. It's a remedy to protect the employer to not be sued. And it also protects the employee to get medical care and rapid swift treatment. Um, so the system is really a, it's supposed to, the work comp system is supposed to provide a quick remedy for the person who's hurt and also protect the employer. Here, with this specific case and all these COVID cases, one of the major issues is going to be, where did the person contact the virus? I mean, how do you prove that, right? Is it contact tracing? Is it, like for example, this gentleman who was in a cabin of an airplane, who had it? Obviously there's flight logs and itineraries of people on it. How do you prove that this guy had it here? Um, and the remedy of work comp in Florida unfortunately, if you die, it does not provide a great benefit. If you break your shoulder or break your arm, you're, it's a different, it's a better remedy, so to speak. But if you die, the poor widow doesn't get much. And what I know people are trying to do, because I'm reading the legal journals, are really trying to, I'm going to use the word circumvent, or get out of the comp system. And they would rather try to try the case or 
prosecute the case under the tort system or negligence. Because if they are um, prosecuting that case in the tort system, they don't have the, the caps of the work comp. So I know there's hundreds of um, or thousands of cases. I actually have a cousin who works for an insurance company who's a work comp defense attorney. And he told me, we had coffee the other day, and we go at our coffee. And he was telling me about the influx of these COVID cases and whether they're nurses, tons of nurses, tons of hospital workers and how, to, how they're dealing with them. And really there's no precedent. That's the, that's the problem. Yeah, that's, I, that sounds like that's really the big challenge. I mean, we've never had to deal with this. So, you know, and, and like you say, it's hard to also, um, you know, be able to distinguish where that person actually um, caught the disease. So it sounds like it's uh, kind of complex, which kind of leads me to my next question. How has the legal landscape changed since COVID and, and how, you know, has it affected your law firm in particular? Sure. Well, I can tell you we're very particular about protocols that we have in place for the office. First of all, we're remote. So by being remote, we're eliminating a lot of that exposure and liability. We know that that's not forever, but any employer that's out there, whether you're a storefront, a restaurant, a law firm, whatever you may be, you better, you bet your butt, you better read up on the CDC guidelines, the social distancing guidelines, how to make a safe environment. And just for example, our office on Federal Highway in Boca Raton, we are planning to come back and we are planning to separate um, kind of like the schools have cohorts, right? So maybe one week it's one division, next week it's other division. And I can pretty much guarantee you we're going to keep a component of remote forever because it, we're actually having success with it. And it allows a lot of flexibility to the employees. So in sum, I would make sure that any employer reads up on the guidelines, pays attention to this, and has a documented protocol to obviously what happens when the first case comes in, what are you going to do? That's going to happen. Do you shut the whole company down? Do you remove that division? So these are all the questions that we're getting from our clients, from people we represent, and really quite frankly, developing ourselves on the fly because there is no book to go to. You got to develop it yourself. Right. And going back to, you know, COVID related cases, you know, what can someone, a prospect client, you know, should, what should they be aware of in terms of what constitutes a COVID related case? Cause you know, you don't even quite know if there is, um, you know, actual, uh, there's an actual viable case. Um, but how, what are things to look for? I mean, is it just supposed sure. to be related? I mean, how, it's just such a, it's such a blur. I mean, it's, it's such a, we're kind of all living through it right now, so. Really difficult question, by the way, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do my best to kind of give you the perspective that I see, at least. And, and, and the perspective that... Sorry, and difficult for me to say, because I think, again, like, I, you know, it's just such a, it's such an intangible thing right now. You have no precedence, so. That's exactly correct. So I think, or what I'm seeing and what we see in the legal world is most related to workplace. And the reason it's related to workplace is the calls that we get or the inquiries that we get and again, this is not what we do, by the way. This is not something that we woke up thinking we're going to do this. Um, our issues related to workplace safety, people not having giving, being given PPP, people or employers not really caring about following the rules, um, the social distancing, the cleaning of the surfaces. I mean, every office has a cleaning crew that comes in at night, right, to clean the garbage out. But are those people now, I mean, we make our cleaning crews clean the surfaces, clean the handrails, clean the elevators. So all these different things have to be, again, um, protocols put in place. They have to be um, followed by the employer and they have to be enforced to the employee, really. And bottom line is, look, and it's so funny in our, just our little world, you know, everyone's on Facebook, right? So you see people on Facebook, what they do in their private lives, and then they come to the workplace. Shame on them. You know, if you're going to go to an outdoor barbecue with 50 people and you come into my office and I see you there, I'm going to be really upset because you just don't have common courtesy. Mm -hmm. And then the other part is, which is even more ironic or just crazy, so to speak, clients come to the office. How do you know where they are, where they've been? So just, I mean, you don't have a, a kind of a retail operation, but just think of yourself of a de as a deli. If you're a deli or a a retail store, a woman's clothing store, these people, these patrons are coming in, you have no clue where they were. 
or what or they may be asymptomatic so it's uncharted territory and i think someone or i think every person or every employer has to come up with the best practices and although there is no best practices totally written out we got the cdc and we have osha to give us a guidance mm -hmm. and that's where i'd recommend people go to right and and do you have a team that you've put in place within your law firm to kind of focus on the evolving nature of of covid and, and cases that might arise kind of funny you say that so Camone hall who i love and she's my paralegal and she's the firm administrator but she's the covid cop we call her um and wendy wright who's our hr director so the two people who kind of admin help us administrate the firm um, are very particular on who comes into our building so we have to have just a you know I call it the essential workers, the mail people, the accounting people. Stuff has to happen still in the firm. So we have a limited group of people that come in on a daily basis. And we're very particular, taking temperatures, asking them before they come in where they were, and a series of different, um, call it best practices slash risk management to let them in. And, you know, Camone's freaked out. I love her to death, but she takes this so seriously. She um, And I don't blame her. And she does not... If she feels there's something wrong, she won't let you in. So she's our COVID cop. That's great. You have your internal COVID cop. And you have a team of attorneys that are also looking into, for instance, I'm sure you're, you know you have a team working on your current case, but you know, on basically monitoring what is happening with other COVID litigations that might arise, like an actual um, team in place because you know it's evolving. Totally. So we keep up with the law journals, the trade journals, so to speak, and there's cases around the country. Um, and these cases will be litigated for years, unfortunately. So there's no answer I can give you today. But these cases and, you know, let's let's visit this a year from today on our our coffee talk on September 24th, 2021. Okay. I'll be able to give you a, a better landscape of how those cases are. But there's hundreds, if not thousands of cases filed across the country. Oh, wow. I didn't realize there were so many that are there that are coming out of the woodwork. So very interesting. And, and that's definitely something that we should um, talk about again and revisit um, on another coffee break. My last question, which is always a fun question, what's your favorite sport and why, Marty? Uh, my favorite sport is baseball. I'm a diehard Yankee fan. Um, I've been a diehard Yankee fan since I'm a kid. I grew up in the Northeast, um, celebrated many World Series um, at Yankee Stadium. And the reason that I really love baseball is um, just my personality and the energy level that I run at is so extreme and so high paced. I love to be able to sit down and actually enjoy the slow pace of baseball. My wife hates it. She likes football. I enjoy the slow pace, the, just the quietness of baseball. <laughs> it, is, it is a bit of a slow game, and, but it totally makes sense. So that's really great. Thank you so much for chatting with us, Marty. Always so good to see you. And we will see you again Thank you. next Thursday at 11 a.m. for another interesting topic. So thanks again, Marty. Thank you, Olivia. Have a great day. You too. And thank you to our viewers for tuning in. Stay well, enjoy your cup of coffee and have a wonderful weekend. Great. Bye. Bye-bye.